Question number one, Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Madam Mayor, thank Councillor Osborne for his question. Um, the answer is uh, as printed. Um, my understanding um, was that the party opposite actually support, supported the decision to go and market test the, the library service, so I hope that uh, support remains. Um, as for the issue of uh, matters of Croydon and Lambeth, forgive me, but I'm not particularly interested in matters to do with Lambeth or Croydon. Uh, I'm sure they will resolve those, so th those problems amicably, and if they don't, we don't have a role in it. Can I just ask then, I think the thing that's puzzling us on, on this matter all the way through is why Croydon? Why is Croydon favoured uh, in the council document? Um, why Croydon when they obviously have this running sore of a dispute over a library? What does that say about their library services uh, when this is going on and their dispute with, uh, with Lambeth? Why Croydon when we don't have a border with Croydon? Why Croydon when we have to go through Merton or Lambeth to get there? Have we approached Merton? Did they shun us? Have we approached Lambeth? Did they shun us? I wonder if the leader can explain. Well, I personally would have preferred to do it entirely ourselves. And of course the times are tough because he bears some responsibility for making these times tough. That's why we are going outside to, to partner with other local authorities. As for who we partner with, well, we partner with whoever we have a best fit with. I have no difficulties in partnering with an authority which is not con conservative controlled, or for that matter, an authority with whom we don't share a border. It's a close fit with Croydon, which is why we've gone with Croydon. Second supplementary. Yes. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, does the leader agree that injecting private sector initiatives into the library service could have a beneficial effect as it is done elsewhere with services in terms of service and value. I thank Councillor Walsh for his uh, supplementary and of course Councillor Walsh as a former chairman of the Leisure and Amenity Services Committee will recall that that was a department that led market testing in so many areas of this council services providing such huge savings and such immense improvements of services that it is only right that as we go on to testing other services, that library service, which has hitherto been seen as difficult to market test, is lead, helping us lead the way in looking at those kind of services that people have hitherto thought as being only fit for public, service, public sector delivery. I am sure the outcome of this particular market testing will, will as always, lead to improved services and savings. Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. I thank um, Councillor Osborne for his um, second question. I have to say that this is a, is, a, is a kind of work in progress type of situation, isn't it? What is incredible about this is that it's taken the coalition government's braveness to start the process of allowing local authorities a second stream to its revenues and to allow local authorities to become much more in charge of its revenue raising. Whilst the, system, whilst the kind of process is still yet to be teased out and details to be worked out and an option, a particular option yet to be chosen, I have to say that one has to welcome the bravery in making local authorities much more responsible for raising their revenues. Governments in the past have talked about it this government has actually decided to do something about it that we must welcome. Well, can I get the leader please to say something about the courage in the council's response? Because he still hasn't answered and I'd like him to be explicit. Does he feel the council's response clearly states that the funding system has the potential to lead Wandsworth res residents even worse off than they currently are? It's difficult to be that clear and that precise until the government chooses an option we cannot weigh out, weigh out the, what the benefits or disbenefits of that option would be. Clearly, the, the report does make clear that the, the starting position we would be no worse off. There is a risk that there may be difficulties there. That's as far as at this stage we can go. Once an option is chosen and once we are consulted on that chosen option, we'll be much more clear and much more precise. 
Um, so supplementary. Uh, does Lydia agree with me that Councillor Osborne's rather in danger of missing the point? Uh, that this is not just a, ma a matter of repatriating uh, funding to local authorities, which in itself is much to be uh, welcomed, but the now local authorities actually have a direct interest in promoting business within their own communities, something which hasn't been the case since the business rate was, uh, was nationalised. Uh, and therefore, that this is very much a non-zero sum, that this will promote uh, businesses in all local authority areas to the good of an economy which is still reeling from 13 years of Councillor Osborne and his party's misrule. Councillor, uh, I thank uh, Councillor Grimston for his supplementary and Councillor Randall for her interruption. Um, I have to say Councillor Grimston is absolutely right. There is, this is much bigger than pound, shilling and pence type of argument. This is about giving local authority a real stake in both determining its, uh, its growth, it, it creating a, a business-friendly environment, tying its business community closely with its residential communities, making a place more wholesome, rather than say, well, businessmen go there and residents go here. That situation will obviously end. And I think this also opens up two possible areas of friction between local and central government. One that I predict will be that local government quite rightly will want to set the poundage uh, in the business rate in the future. I think that is right and that is a kind of reform that we should also press for. And secondly, it must also open up a, the demand from the business community that they too want to say, almost an electoral say, in the affairs of this council. And that too will be a demand that I think the government will have to concede on in, in due course. Councillor Dunn. Um, I can't thank Councillor Dunn for her question. I, I'd say the, uh, the Kingdom experience, and I think it was a bit of an experience. The, the three public meetings were, uh, were not that well attended, but the ones that were, were well, well attended. People were engaging with the process, and people had enormous confidence in the outcome of that process. Whilst the report doesn't come to anything like kind of conclusions that some people might have wanted. What I find the most interesting in this report is that it has taken out of debate a series of facts. It establishes facts, particularly the timeline, what happened, where it happened, how it happened. And that does mean that we have a set of facts that we can all agree on. And it gives for the future a record of what happened on the night. For that, of course, the report is useful. But the report is also the first off the stocks, and therefore it's something that lets, uh, uh, gives us an opportunity to say, we've done our research, we know what happened, here is our story. That is very useful too. Councillor Dunn. It goes on, there we go. <laughs> um, can I ask the leader um, if he is going to um, recognise um, publicly any of the council officers who were referred to in the report who really went beyond the call of duty and um, were quite magnificent on the night of the riot, who, I think in one case is named, in another case just referred to. Um, thank Councillor Dunn for our supplementary. Uh, the Mayor recently held a reception recognising the contribution of many of our staff and others in going beyond the call of duty on the night and, and, and afterwards. I think what is important is to recognise that, appreciate it and record it. But we also have to accept that our staff who are well rewarded and well regarded are expected to go beyond the call of duty because that is the standard we've set for themselves, them and for us. And that is right that we do it in the right way. But I think uh, to individually single out some and not others would be in my view invidious. But we have done a recognition. I know that, 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 that the chief executive wrote to staff. I did too. And the mayor has recognized their contribution. Councillor Belton. Can uh, the leader tell us the next steps he has in mind? Uh, he mentioned the recommendations, for instance. Are those recommendations and a council response going to be reported to the next cycle of meetings or the one after? Does he have a programme for the future? Thank Councillor Belton for his supplementary. And I um, can assure him that work is going on now in preparing a paper, uh, hopefully to come to the next cycle, addressing the recommendations and, and charting the way forward. It may be that not, the paper may not be in totality full, uh, 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 but it'll be a job that we've started. It might go on to a second cycle. There may be further and future papers anyway. 
Councillor B. Johnson. Uh, question for the leader, please. Thank Councillor Johnson for his question. There's a fairly detailed answer, and, and I think the one key point here is that the blue badge scheme already attracts a charge of two pounds which has been static for 30 years. This is an attempt to recover the costs uh, uh, of administering the, administering the charge. And there is another large group of people who also have no choice uh, other than I suppose they could opt not to have one in getting a freedom pass. Well of course freedom pass also attracts a small charge. So I mean it's not unusual for people who qualify for certain services to pay for part of the administration of it. Supplementary. Councillor Johnson. To monitoring closely the impact of the rise in prices and to uh, reversing the increase in charges should there be any demonstrable uh, correlation between the increase in, increase in cost and uptake. A, well, it's an interesting debate we could have. If Councillor Johnson then uh, agrees to identify where the shortfall in income could be made up, uh, should we reverse it, then maybe there is a dialogue to be had. It's very usual to say, will you not do this? It's very unusual for the opposition to say, will you do this? Particularly when it comes to saving money. So I'm not surprised with that. I think what is very important in the blue badge area is Disabled people welcome a tough approach to policing the, 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 the blue badge scheme. Fraud, which is the biggest bane of their life, in fact, more than ours, because it brings the entire scheme into disrepute and their entitlement into disrepute. That is something that they want us to tackle. This money will help us tackle that. And in fact, uh, Councillor Johnson might see that tonight's uh, press release uh, is about a, a case in Earlsfield where somebody has used the mother's card to, to deprive some other disabled person, presumably, of a parking place. That is the kind of action we want to take, and this money will go a long way towards making sure we do it. So, something mentioned by the Mayor. Uh, could I ask the leader... Thank you. Uh, could I ask the leader if um, he's definitely committed to continuing to tackle that problem of fraud, which unfortunately plagues the scheme and increases the cost of running it? I thank Councillor Ryder on his supplementary and I believe I'm right in saying this is your first supplementary since coming to this council. Well, well done. Congratulations. I, can I share with, with, with colleagues that you know, for some years some of you know that I worked for a disability charity and, and I know an awful lot of disabled people then used to find that the issue of the blue badge fraud in those days was an orange badge. Uh, the fraud is one thing that they are united about because it, they do recognize that, they, they, that their own entitlement is brought into disrepute. They also know that it increases competition to what a space that is earmarked for them. So, yes, we are committed. And this council has had some remarkable successes in policing that scheme. So, yes. Councillor Torrington. Question five to the leader. I thank Councillor Torrington for her question. I'd say that um, it's been a very long time since Wandsworth has had a, a full cabinet minister um, and, and therefore it is a matter of enormous pride for us all um, on both sides, I guess, to have one of our MP uh, uh, around the cabinet table. And what I also know with, about Justine is that she will, uh, she's a very intuitive politician who understands the problems of people and applies that understanding to discharging her functions in government. And I hope in the area of transport she will understand those particular concerns people in Putney have, look at it on a national scale and give us a very, very good value for money. Councillor Torrington. Yes, and uh, does he join me in hoping she will join the uh, local campaign opposing any long-term abolition of runway alternation at Heathrow, now being trialled by British Airways for the next four months, as well as the campaign to expand river transport? I thank Councillor Torrington for her uh, supplementary. As I said earlier, I mean, Justine understands the issue of transport and, and how it impacts on her residents instinctively, which is why she supported this council's campaign on the third, third runway at Heathrow. 
and I guess that on this issue she will have uh, uh, she will want to support her, her residents. But of course, as a national politician with the national responsibility, she has to balance uh, local interest against national interest, and I'm sure she will be very good at, at doing that delftly and diplomatically. But what I would say is that my, when I next see her, I have a fairly long shopping list for her, for her to look at. I think the issue of long, longer trains is one that she as a minister needs to tackle, extended platforms is something she needs to tackle. It will have a national impact as well as a local impact, making more of our river here, but also other rivers elsewhere, to use that as, a, as, as some way of adding transport experience for people. The whole business of the airport's regime around London and elsewhere is obviously something for her to tackle. But above all, I would hope that she would look at our ambitions for the Northern Line extensions in the context of the national growth that Nine Elms will un, 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 uh, unlock. And I hope that she, as a former Treasury Minister, will also understand the importance of growth and the, the key role Northern Line Extensions plays in unlocking it. Councillor Locker. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with the leader. I think it's absolutely wonderful news that uh, Justine Greening has been promoted to transport. Um, thinking about airports, though, um, I had a chance to reflect as my... Uh, return flight from holiday was stacked uh, uh, and the approach to Heathrow, which is probably an experience that many people here have had. Um, but we've also had some important announcements about improving rail links between Heathrow and Gatwick. So I just wonder if the leader has had a chance to consider whether or not his preference would be for the uh, so-called so Heathwick solution or for, uh, to uh, support the mayor with the idea of an estuary island, uh, island airport. Well, um, two, two, two quite difficult areas, aren't there? Uh, the estuary airport, well, I, I'm sure that's, that's um, uh, an interesting idea. Only I think yesterday was it, or the day before. I think it was yesterday that um, I was talking to uh, Councillor Belton across there about uh, Maplin Sands, I think, uh, uh, which uh, a previous member of this uh, MP for, for this borough had promoted many, many years ago. Um, that didn't go very far. I don't know where Estuary Airport will go, but what is important is the role a hub airport plays in, 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 the, in the national economy, and that importance is something that I'm sure Justine will be aware of. As far as the link to Heathrow, the one that I would very much more keenly support is the one that links Waterloo with Heathrow, via Clapham Junction and Nine Elms, making giving Nine Elms an international link and also changing the, the, the regime uh, of the London Gatwick Express, not stopping uh, at many of the locations in the borough, particularly the location of Ballam, which allows an interchange with the Northern Line uh, uh, and serving a wider community there. Those are kind of local concerns which may have a national impact that I hope Justine will look kindly upon. Councillor Osborne. Question number six to the leader, please. I thank Councillor Osborne for question six. Um, as, a, as, a, as the answer says, that we have done all we can, and in fact I'll be seeing the Mayor for London on Friday when I'll be further raising the interests of this borough and the issue of police in this borough. Councillor Osborne. Um, just, uh, th I thank the leader for his uh, answer because... Um, uh, he and I worked hard that afternoon to create a consensus uh, resolution in this council. Just one small question. Would he agree with me? It would have been nice. The consensus resolution was included in the Kingan report. Would have been nice if the consensus resolution had been on the council website in the report of uh, the emergency council resolution, because it wasn't for many weeks. Does he agree with that? That's interesting uh, supplementary because it's uh, a way of tying a later question into a supplementary and it's fine. And it's, 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 I accept that. I, I mean, I'm not um, um, going to uh, apologize or, oh, sorry, I'm not going to mince my words about the website. We did give an undertaking that these things will be on the website as soon as possible. It wasn't possible to do it as soon as it should have been. I, I'm sorry it wasn't, but clearly things will improve in due course. Councillor Brown. Um, could the leader update the council on the progress in appointing a new borough commander? 
Oh, uh, I thank Councillor Brown for that supplement. Actually, I got some timely information in the sense that uh, earlier this evening, uh, the Chief Executive received a phone call from a senior Met officer who has indicated that uh, the position of the Wandsworth Borough Commander has attracted one candidate um, and, uh, uh, and that that candidate is uh, going, well, going for the selection hoops is going to come and meet the chief executive and in due course uh, soundings will be taken of, of, of him and myself and uh, an appointment will be made. Not, no white smoke as yet but there is uh, one candidate only so maybe white smoke sooner than you expected. The, t the time for questions to the leader is now over.